Good evening, good evening fam. How are you tonight? This is definitely, it's been a while since I've been on and I'm so excited for the guest that I'm going to have on tonight. It's Alicia Anabel Santos, La Santera. So please let your folks know that we are on. Please reach out to your folks. Hello, my sister Lauren is on. Yes, 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 yes. Please share this live with all your peoples. Wanted to come on a few minutes before we get started just to kind of uh, connect with y'all. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've been in connection in community. And yes, we are ready. We are ready, ready, Lauren. Thank you. Yes. So first of all, I want to definitely, you know, just have a moment of connection, a moment of silence for those beautiful babies and teachers and their families and the community in in Texas, right? Um, there's just been so much going on in the world with those individuals who lost their lives in Buffalo, right? I mean, we could just like go on and go on and me being an empath, it's been kind of hard to to connect with the news, to connect with social media. So I've kind of distanced myself just a little bit just to protect my energy. Um, and, and it's okay to do that. If you feel that the news is an overload, then go ahead and do what you need to do for yourself to protect your energy during this time. So I'll introduce Alicia when she comes on because I definitely don't want her to miss the introduction. So I'm super, super excited because uh, it's been a couple of months. Some of you know that I have uh, was commuting. I am, uh, we got Miss La Santeras on. So we're just gonna get her right up in here. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. All right, here we go. Listen. Woo! Hey. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, my oh, love. Hello, hello, my love. I'm just so excited. Me so too. excited that I've been like checking my phone, making sure the internet was okay, making okay. sure my earbuds were working. Right, I, I wanted this interview, this conversation to be like so perfect, right? So I want to, first of all, I was right before you came on, I was giving a moment of silence, right? To those babies that we lost in Texas, the educators, the family members. Uh, and, and, you know, we're finding out that there's just so much inequities, right? We're finding out more and more and more. And that it's okay if you in the community are distancing yourself from the news, from social media. We had the amazing people in Buffalo, you know, some senseless crimes that are going on in the world. And I just wanted to take a moment. This is May is Mental Health Month as well, awareness. So please take care of yourself. Whatever it is you feel you need for yourself this evening. I'm glad that some of you decided that this was part of your self-care because it will be. You You already know La Santera's going to be dropping those gems. Eh, 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 right? So I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I just wanted to sort of give homage to the, to the folks and just sort of be in a space. So let's just have like 30 seconds of silence um, while we connect with those spirits that have... Um, left us in the physical plane and are now in the spiritual plane at this time. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I'm noticing that my face, let me uh, readjust my technology here because you know you want to see all of me. Okay, I wore a pretty white blouse just for y'all tonight. I want to make sure y'all can see my blog, okay? <laughs> all right, so let's get started. So first of all, uh, I, I want I love to share whenever I have someone on. So Candid Conversations is something that I started about a year and a half ago during the quarantine, during the pandemic, where I, as an extrovert, felt like I needed something for me somewhere that I could 
sort of exercise um, my energy because I was just feeling like constricted being home. And I love talking to people about their lives, their trajectories, how they've impacted the world, right? And so every single person that I have had on Candid Conversations, and you, if you missed any episodes, you could definitely check them out on IGTV or check it out on YouTube on the Cindy Bautista Tomas. And so tonight is such a special night for many reasons, right? I didn't get on in April because I just had so much going on in the month of April and just really paying homage to my mom who I had lost, who transitioned last April. And I just wasn't sort of up to engaging in, in candid conversations and that's okay, right? When you feel like you need to take a break on something, you go ahead and do that, right? So, you know, what I decided to do tonight was to, I've been wanting to have Alicia Anabel Santos on for quite some time. But if you follow, if you don't follow La Santera, first of all, take a moment and follow her, all the work that she does. Definitely go to her website later on. She'll probably talk about the work that she's doing. Um, but I met Alicia Anabel Santos in 2013. The way that I met her was online. I was in the process of planning a wedding, right? I was getting remarried. I was just got accepted to a doctoral program. And I felt like I needed something to start connecting. I felt like Spirit was talking to me about writing, writing. And I just didn't know what I was going to be writing, but I knew I needed to write. And then uh, somehow we became Facebook friends. I don't even know how. And you posted about the very first writing from the room workshop. At the time, I was a divorcee, struggling, working like all these different odds and ends jobs, trying to figure out my life financially, trying to figure out my life socially. And I remember that when you had the exam, I mean, the, the exam, that's where my brain is at. When you had the writing from the room workshop, no exams, sorry, if that was triggering for any of you. <laughs> Well, anyway, I couldn't even afford whatever the pricing was of your workshop, right? And I remember reaching out to you and saying, listen, is there any way that I could do some kind of payment plan? Like, I, I really feel called to to connect with this workshop, but I, I, I don't have the funds to pay for it. And she said, pay what you can, Right. Little did I know that that was the beginning of like this beautiful friendship. I call people, that, I have a lot of mentors that become friends and I end up calling them friend tours, right? So she's a friend tour because not only is she like the bomb.com, I look up to her in so many ways. I've learned so much from you, Alicia Ana del Santos, right? Writing from the room is not for the faith. Let me tell you, let me tell you. So every year, what I did was I used writing for the room as a self-care place for me. While I was engaging in doctoral studies, working full-time, um, in doctoral program full-time, I would, Sundays, I would then engage in this writing work that was healing, cathartic, and met, like, brilliant, amazing people it, it, during that process, right? Really got to know... Um, Alicia, I got to know her beautiful, beautiful daughter, who, of course, we got to give her, like, and I know you're about to bring it, right? Because today is Miss Courtney Ann Alcone's 30th birthday, yes. and I want to just give her so much love, so much um, attention. I, I'm so blessed that I, I got to know, I get to know her personally, and I've got to know the gift of who she is and how she's contributed to the world. So that's a long ass introduction, right? To the amazing, beautiful um, teacher, spiritual advisor, educator, um, friend, mother, sister, partner, I mean, all of the above. So at this time, I want y'all to put hearts, put some hearts in the chat box Wow, I'm going to ask you a question, Alicia. I'd like for you to take time to introduce yourself and, and let us know what are the gifts that you bring to the world, right? Because I'm not even going to ask you, like, what do you do? 
because <laughs> that's the, uh, like you do so many different things. But I would like folks to know why I rave about you, why I love you so much, why I will um, go to bat for you, right? So please share with us what are the gifts that you contribute to the world for your people. Tell us about Alicia, Annabel, Santos. What a beautiful intro. I love you so much. I was, my head is spinning because the truth of the matter is like, I was thinking like, how could I say who I am in very few words, right? Because I'm a writer and we could talk all fucking night, Cindy. You already know. But one of the things that hit me right now is I am a prophet of love, period. Like I am a messenger of love in all of its forms, period. And it's tough love, it's genuine love, it's compassionate love, it can be painful love, it's truthful love, but it's love. And so, you know we gotta, I gotta pause all the motorcycles and all the dominoes playing in the background. Um, <laughs> the DRs. So, I'm a writing midwife. You gave me that name. The writing, with, the writing midwife. And so I've had the honor since 2013 to facilitate and hold space for writers to come and give birth to their stories. And that's something that I love. It's definitely my signature workshop. It's definitely the first workshop where, where I found myself and understood that I am, that's my role is to help provide a space for folks to come in and go through their birthing pains of creativity, which I love. Um, and then I host a slew of spiritual workshops and like so many, I'm get, I am birth to so many beautiful experiences and decided this week that I needed to shift the way I even show up in social media. Mm. I felt I've been feeling and I sent out a very long newsletter just before our live. Um, where I, I, I say to folks, you know, I really wanted to get vulnerable with it. Um, right now, I am, I'm a priestess. I'm a mother of two beautiful daughters. And we're gonna talk a lot about being mothers. But one yeah. of the things that I am, for me, before all the things is I'm a writer. I am a writer. And what that means is that I know that I am a creator. And I know that I co-create with the universe. So when I'm not writing, then I'm not really living. Because mm. that truly is the gift that God has given me to give the world. So of all the things, how I want to be remembered is the things that I wrote and hopefully they touched someone affected mm. helped mm. some I, I hope that people feel loved in the things that i write and share think the things that i write and share you know and so we could talk about all the workshops because there are tons of things that i i'm never not busy baby never not busy. listen whenever i'm like well what's alicia doing then i get an email and it's like i'm having these seven eight ten workshops I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gooseness, oh my gooseness. So thank you for breaking down. And I feel like you, you probably missed a couple of the gifts that you give because they're just so many, right? And, you know, what happens is when I have folks on, oh, you saw what my husband, I Chef Winston Thomas, he's just my favorite person. My Leo. He's like your biggest fan. <laughs> he's a mess. So, you know, one of the things that I love about you, Alicia, Anabel Santos, and it's probably part of, you know, our discussion today, right, 
um, a couple of things, right? You know, the title of today's workshop. So many of you know that in candid conversations, the uh, guest chooses the title pretty much based on what they want to give to you all, right? And this is a vulnerable share. Some of the questions, I mean, all the questions that I come up with as folks are talking is like straight from the heart based on what you share, right? You know, one of the things that I love about you, Alicia, is that you're, you're never afraid to sort of recreate, reimagine, and reinvent how you want to show up in the world, right? And, and that is a gift because sometimes people are so stuck in traditions, so stuck in how others see them, that it takes them a while to sort of be authentic and be like, I love, um, you, like just be unapologetically you, Alicia. And, and I love that about you, right? Like you release whomever you need to release from your life, right? You'll bring in whomever you need to bring in, right? And all the while centering you know, your self-care, your wellness, protecting your energy. And I want to just honor that at this time. Uh, happy birthday to you, Alicia, you. for your 30th year of being a mom, a caregiver. So what does that mean to you, right? 30 years of being a mom. Let's talk about that for a moment. So first of all, it's really, really hard to not be near Courtney to not be in the U.S. right now um, mm -hmm. and not be celebrating her. So I miss her terribly. I miss her terribly. Um, but what it means to me to be a mom of a 30-year-old is that I pray that I have done, ju done her justice, that I, have, that I have honored this role of mother because I didn't want to be a mother. I was scared to death. Mm. For me, at the time, I was young. I was 20, barely fucking making it out of high school. Not sure what I wanted to do with my life. College wasn't an option. And I just knew that I didn't want to be a mother because I didn't want to fuck up my, a child. I didn't want to to do to a child what I believed was done to me or what was done to me, right? Because I, um, I, I had my parents were very strict. My father was very abusive, um, physically abusive, verbally abusive. Um, and so I just didn't want to fuck her up. Real talk, yeah. like that's, that's yeah. true. What I believed and I was like, I'm never gonna be a mother. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be nobody's mother. I don't wanna have any children. Stand kids, like all of that. <laughs> As I said, because you know there are people that are like, well, I can't wait to be a mother. I could, I could not wait to be free of their regime. Is actually how I felt. And then I got, mm. and then I, and then I had this thing in my body, and I needed to, to make a decision fast. Am I going to be all in, or am I going to not? Mm. And so the moment that I decided that I would um, keep the pregnancy, I knew that I needed to change my life. I didn't know how. I didn't have a role model. I didn't have people who were modeling therapy and purpose and the, my upbringing. And I know it's similar to yours. Our parents were very much about survival and putting food on the table. And there are, there are values that we were, you know, that we inherited. Um, and education era de boca pa fuera, but not because they modeled education, <laughs> right? Not because they were the most educated folks in the room, you know, because, you know, that, like, especially in my upbringing was a little, my father was a little bruto with me. He was a little... It was rough. It was very rough. And so I hoped to not be rough with this baby. And then she was born, 1992, 30 years ago today. And I see this little thing who was ugly. I was like, oh, no, this is <laughs> happening. And then they wanted me to breastfeed it and all this craziness. I was, oh, 
no, this is not. And then we went home and I remember writing Courtney um, because we knew, I didn't know that I was having a girl because I didn't want to know the sex. Um, but I dreamt of her all the time. Yeah. She came, she visited me a lot. So when she was born, I remember writing her a letter. And in that letter, I remember saying to her all of the things that I wished for her life, that she would go mm. to Check, check. She got her bachelor's from Syracuse. She got her master's from Sarah Lawrence. Check, check, check. I wrote in that letter that I hoped that she would be happy, that above all things, that she would be happy, that she would have a joy-filled life. And I oh. it, to, to figuring all that out, you know, on, on her own terms. And so what does it mean to me 30 years later? The fact that I had a hand in creating something, someone so beautiful, someone so kind, mm. so forgiving, mm -hmm. someone who has been so tender and forgiving of me because I have not been the best fucking mother and I have not been the best role model. Mm. I have moments I'm a damn good role model today, but I know <laughs> sees me. I'm like, if you would, if you would have known that bitch back, you know, back in the day, back in the early '90s, son, when she was fucking it all up. You know? No, and I want to pause for a minute, Alicia, because there's been a few comments in the chat, really honoring your authenticity around that, like waiting to uh, have a child, and, and just that authentic feeling of like. I didn't want to be a mom, right? And then, and then I had a decision to make once I got pregnant and that it's okay to feel that resentment, to feel that anger, especially those of us that experienced some degrees of trauma growing up, whether it's by hands of your, your parents that did the best that they could with what they had, right? And it's like in retrospect, we could say this, <laughs> right? Um, but I want to honor that <laughs> because... Our kids might be thinking the same. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Right? So I want to honor that because, um, like, let's pause on that, right? That, that, you know, I had the gift of reading your book, and, and I'd love for you to talk about, you know, your process and in writing that book, your memoir, where um, you, you shared all so that Courtney could have that, that gift of your legacy which which wasn't all roses and it wasn't pretty but you know what she has that and, and then you have that that you were able to sort of share that gift to her could you talk about that a little bit so back in 2011 courtney courtney turned 19. it was may 2011 that I finished writing Finding Your Force and Love. And I wrote it in the form of See me I'm on Yo te dira cuando yo termine. I love it. I love it. I, I just, love it. I love it. <laughs> that people you, the, the lady from the Colmado is like, Alicia, if I had known you didn't eat today, I would have brought you some moro de guandule, con chulet. Oh. It's, different. it's a different energy. It's a different, like people definitely are, they have your back, they take care of you, they, you know. When I was admitted in, like side note, when I was admitted to the hospital back in March, it was her who like came in to help drink because I couldn't move. And I was like, you know, no. <laughs> So it is nice. Um, so the book. So the the format for writing that book was inspired by an author who um, his name was Oscar Oscar Iguelos. Oscar Iguelos. I went to a dinner party and we were talking about writing, and he said to me, "He's like write the." Write your book as if you were talking to someone that you really love and someone that you really trust. And that was the inspiration behind writing Finding Your Force, A Journey to Love as a love letter to her. Mm. For me, I wanted to gift her um, 
the story of us, right? The story of her mother, everything that I had been through, everything that I had experienced, everything that I had learned, every mistake I made from that time period, right? Because it was it was very intentional in how I wrote it. I wrote it basically those first twenty, those first nineteen years of her life, and I mm -hmm. gifted her for her nineteenth birthday. Mm -hmm. The process was grueling reliving it, reliving it on the page, um, re-traumatizing myself. Um, there was a point where I had written the most, two of the most painful um, sections of the book, chapters of the book, and I lost those chapters. One day the computer just completely went blank. And I was like, oh, hell no. I wanted to throw the computer out the window on oh, wow. and so the process was painful but also um illuminating like i learned mm. a and i challenged I, and i and i finished something Cindy. Mm. i because one thing that i was always told was that i was never gonna be shit that i was never gonna be shit that i was never wow. gonna do and that i never finished anything that i was never good enough that i was never responsible that I couldn't finish it. And the fact that I started and finished it proved to myself that I could do it, that I could do the that I say I want for my life. And so finding your force um, is the gift that keeps on giving because a bitch is still finding her force, girl. <laughs> and I love that because someone as fierce as you like your presence, I mean, literally your presence, like you're, you're, you're six feet. Is it six feet? Six one. Mm -hmm. You're six, like literally, at least I don't understand this, it's six foot one. So when she walks into the building, like you already feel her presence just in terms of like how you like physically walk into her space. But then your spirit is so, um, it's it, 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 like it resounds a room. Like the love, the passion, right? Uh, what has been such a gift for me is that I've been a part of maybe seven or eight w writing from the room workshops. And, uh, and I said to you, I said, you know what? I can literally like write about like how you've showed up because there was a lot of pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of joy, right? Triumph. But you had a gift of like holding space, right? And you're not a clinician, right? <laughs> Someone says you're a whole giant, right? In every sense of the word, not just physically, but like like who she is, is like a giant, so generous, so giving. And, and so that you've been able to gift to so many people. Like there's been people in your workshops that I've seen them like on bestsellers list, right? Like doing like these incredible things that I'm like, I remember when they had that aha moment in Alicia's class. Yeah. I remember when they picked up the pieces of who they were and Alicia picked it up for them and tied it up in this neat bowl so that they could move forward in the world. I love right? that. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, me being one of them, right? I remember I was about to get married and thinking about my dad and just feeling all kind of cray cray and I was just like oh I don't even know what I'm here I don't know what I'm writing right and you were like girl you know why you're here you, you know what we're doing right so you know I, I want to honor that because that book and please uh, share with folks where they could get that book if it's still in publication because it's such a gift that book in terms of like the authenticity and just even the way that you were able to write it and the timeliness that you wrote it, right? And it'll inspire others because so many people have stories to share, but they think it has to be written in a certain way, that you got to do this. And sometimes it's just putting it on the page. Like, that's what you taught me. Sometimes I, it's just like, put it on the page. Talk about that a little bit. So I'm typing, hang on, I'm typing the book in the, in the thing so you can pin it. Um... Like, I remember when um, 
when you shared about your book. I literally took that book on my honeymoon. And I remember that while, yeah. you know, I was on my honeymoon, you know, enjoying time with my husband. But also we had time that we were just kind of spending time by ourselves because I'm also someone that I, I need to have time by myself. And I remember I couldn't put the book down. <laughs> I couldn't put it down to the point where Winston was like, um, so, uh, we on a honeymoon or what? What are we doing? <laughs> Bringing me on the honeymoon, baby. Tell me, repeat the okay, question. Let's... Repeat the question. The question is about, like, you know, people, and I know I want to get to, so the title of today's discussion is Sankofa, right? Like, you know, connecting with your past to heal your present. And and and, and this weekend, right, was a, a weekend where every year, uh, I think you started it five years ago. Was it five or six years ago? This is eight years ago. What? Really? This year will be the eighth year. This year will be the eighth year. Gosh. So I want to, I mean, first of all, because of what you shared, I mean, my mother-in-law, she's talking about she's going to write her book. All right, Miss Gloria. Oh, I'm going to hold you to it, Miss Gloria. Let's go, Gloria. She's going to write her book. Lauren said that, that you would say if they didn't want the story told, they shouldn't have done it, right? Listen, <laughs> some people about to get real upset when my book comes out, but it's okay. It's okay. okay. So let's talk about that, right? Like this process, right? You created this course, Writing from the Room, that evolved into this beautiful process, really a healing process for many. And then you created this weekend experience. I mean, that's the only word I could use because you called it a retreat, right? But it was like an experience. Like talk about why you started you know, I didn't realize it was eight years that you had created. This is the eighth year. Last year, we didn't, we, we, because of COVID, we didn't, we didn't honor it our sixth year. We did it virtually. Well, let me start from the top. Start from the top. Writing from the womb was birthed when I came to understand that my most important work lives and resides in my womb space. Mm. I understood that if I was going to do any writing, that I needed to tell the fucking truth, that I needed to write the fucking story, period. And so that is one of my mantras, and that is one of the things that I hold when I talk, teach any anything. Like, we're telling the truth, and we are writing the fucking story. And so what I love about writing from the womb is that God has given me a gift to be able to hold that kind of space, to, to create a space for our people to come in where they might not feel understood, where they don't have to explain their trauma, their pain, their experience, their history, their story. They're with pretty much, and pretty much a lot of my work is centered around people of color mm. and honoring our stories and elevating our stories. And so, Creating Writing from the Womb has just helped to expand me as a writer, push me. We, do, we read a lot of writers' work. We write different genres. It's not one specific group of people. We're fiction, nonfiction, poetry, playwrights, TV. And yes, it has been a joy to see so many of our friends, because they're our friends and our families, and the winning. Yes. Like they're yes. writing movies. They're actors. They're have empowerment, organization, mm -hmm. Velocity Visions, Nancy Ruffin, like Miriam Rodriguez. So much, oh my goodness. Maria, like we, Siri, like we have so many amazing, Sonia, Sonia Alejandra who's publishing, it's like every other week I'm seeing her publishing on a website. And so it really, um, to just be a space where writers can come and write their story and create what they were born to create. Now, fast forward, 
eight years ago. Someone do the math for me. Eight years ago, what year was that? Come on, y'all. I can't do the math. And 2014. 2014. 2014. 2014. We hosted our first Sankofa Sisterhood Writers Retreat. The Catskills, Sankofa and so what is Sankofa? Sankofa, the definition is to go back, to bring forward. We're going to our past. So let me give you some definitions. So Sankofa, in the spirit of the Akan symbol of Sankofa, which is the bird, it's a beautiful bird. It's actually the logo for the New York City Latina Writers Group, of which I am the founder. It is a writer's organization that started in 2000, 2006. Yeah. So we're 16 years old this year. What? 16 years old this year. Yes, ma'am. Wow. No, girl. And so, so Sankofa, that's the, the logo. So it's this beautiful bird with its head looking back. Picking up, so the symbol recognizes the importance of looking to the past to make positive progress in the future, right? That's one. Um, it's a bird with its head turned backward, taking an egg from its back. It expresses the importance of reaching back for knowledge gained in the past to bring it into the present in order to make positive progress. And, and that's pretty much the, the vision and mission of the New York City Latina Writers Group was to be this space where we tell stories. And that's why we titled today's, tonight's talk, El Camino to Sankofa, which is how do we go back to this past that is incredibly traumatic to heal. Yeah. Which, by the way, is taking place this year in the Dominican Republic. So let's get that out of the way. Let's just... I haven't posted it, but save the date. I'm letting y'all know. Get your plane tickets. It is July 17th through the 23rd of July. July mm. 17th through July 23rd in the Dominican Republic. And so the Sankofa Sisterhood Writers Retreat is a writer's retreat. So there are workshops, there are speakers, but also it's a self-care retreat. So there are baths and Reiki and yoga and morning meditation, and a private chef that cooks all of our meals, woke foods in the house. Woke foods will be, will be preparing our food this year also. And so, sanctuary. And by the way, this is the weekend. This is our anniversary. That's why we chose yes. it. Because every May for Courtney's birthday, which is why she hates y'all, yes. is we, we host <laughs> Yeah, she's like, you really, you really feel like doing a retreat on my birthday weekend. Like, what's really good? So we've switched it to the summers, and now we international, baby. Now we in the Caribbean. Now we we taking it out of the country. Wow. No, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about. I mean, we have. I, I don't want to hold you too long because I know you you about to do something else after this. A real nice celebratory. You already know with readings and well, whatnot. I want you to questions. Okay. okay. I hear what you say. What'd you say? I can't hear you. No, I didn't hear what you just said. No, I said I want to hear all your questions. Yes. So my my I'm like my first question. I have so many questions. So first of all, uh, many of y'all don't know, but it was because of Alicia Anabel Santos that I finally figured out what the heck I was doing with my dissertation. So not only was she able to help me in writing so much of my young adult novel, which I'll be going back to next week, I'm really excited about. Um, but there was a moment where I was struggling with terminology on analyzing my qualitative data. And I don't know if you remember that. But we were in the library at Teachers College at Columbia, and, and, and it was all spiritual, all love. I mean, all the ancestors was in that room. And you, like, sunned me in such a beautiful way right? <laughs> and helping me to, like, connect with my strength, right? Because 
no matter who we are as women of color, sometimes that imposter syndrome shows up. No matter who we are in terms of our experiences, in terms of the accolades, the ways in which people view us, sometimes we still doubt who we are, right? I will never forget the day that you were sitting in a writing from the room workshop and you said, I want it, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And you've done all of those things. Yeah. Moving to the motherland. Buying freaking land. I want you to talk about El Santuario because I want people to show you love. I want you to put the cash app, the Zelle, right? I want to talk about El Santuario. That's going to bring to the world, right? And, and, and all the things that you said you was going to, I mean, those amazing books that you wrote for your brother, mm. those children books. I mean, I, I said a lot, but whatever you want to talk about first, I please, love you. Please talk about those things because well, first, oh. that's what it's about. Like birthing, literally birthing things. I, I mean, yes, as women, we birth children and hallelujah for that, right? And also we get to create and birth things. Yo, can we go back to that day at Teachers College? What is your theory? What is it? No. Yo, so we let's go there because this is it's so it's so beautiful. Cindy um co basically commissioned me to come and give provide her support, right? To to be her, her to be her writing midwife during her dissertation and help her sort of look at all of the things she was looking at, all of her case studies, her interviews, and we're reading it and we're, and we're reading it. These are people's stories. So we're storytellers, so we are. And she kept talking about entre nos. Cindy kept talking about things that are just between us, things that only we would know from our culture, from our communities. And this is what our, this is what our writing journey is about. This is what being of service is about. Like with mm. us working, like no, no, it doesn't matter that it was for your PhD. It was entre nos. It was for our people. It was fubu for us by us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was when you kept saying it. I was like, yo, she has no idea what her ancestors are telling her is going to be something that she coins that will be used. In, in people's coursework for decades. Like, let's talk about that because that's what it's all about. That's what being mm. about. Like, so all of this work that we're doing, the writers and the spiritual and the this and the that, and all of it is really about how can we create space to bring people together where we are seen, where we mm. are where we are seen and where we are valued and that, my love, is everything. So I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I love that I'm part of your family because we are beyond a friendship. I'm like one of the siblings, you know, <laughs> siblings, you know, sister from another mother, sister from another mister. Um, and so I'm really proud of you, Cindy. I'm really proud of, because you, you are a role model to me too. Like I, I, like mm. you, watching you move in the world reminds me to try to tap into more joy because I'm very serious. I'm very serious about my shit. Mm. Um, and so sometimes it's very hard <laughs> to laugh. Like, I don't think I'm funny. I don't think I'm funny. Yeah, you know, I don't think people get my shit, but like, like, I'm serious. Um, Cause I'm serious about, I'm serious about my shit. <laughs> No, but I love, that. I love that and thank you. I embrace it and I, I honor all the things that you said um, because of what you were able to support me with. You know, I, I, you know I, I've been writing some things so people won't be reading about Entre North. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So I get to write journal articles and I get to write like young adult novels and short stories. So we could be and do all of those things, right? I was struggling with, can I be an academic and 
what Chris Emden, this amazing um, scholar and brother, Dr. Christopher Emden, he talks about being ratchetdemic, right? And I'm definitely a ratchetdemic, right? Like when I teach, it's yeah. like everything comes out. My students be like, well, I'll be like, listen. Anyway, but um, <laughs> listen. <laughs> oh, no, never get it twisted. I'm from the Bronx. Hey, listen, I let them know in a minute. Like, no vamos a estar jodiendo aquí. Oh, so, you know, but let's talk about, but thank you for that. I appreciate that. Because that's one of the things that I'm working on is receiving the accolades. Because many of us, we're so good at, at telling people, oh my God, you're amazing. You're this, this, and that. But sometimes we struggle with receiving. And that's an area of growth for me. So I'm going to just like receive all the things that you said. And I thank you for that. Because that's part of the circle of abundance. Mm -hmm. Right? That's part of it. Right? So let's talk about El Santuario. That's like your vision around that. Because I remember the day you was like, yo, I'm going to have lands. I'm moving back to DR. And you was like, yo, people think I'm kidding. And I'll never forget the day I got the text. You was like, yo, call me. I was like, what? What? So let's talk about that. So I am a priestess. I'm a Sadera. I am an initiated priestess in an African traditional religion. I'm initiated in several religions. Um, but I am a Santera in La Regla de Ocha, Lucumi, Santeria, initiated in Cuba. I'm going to be turning six years old this year as a Santera, um, but, but have been in the religion um, formally for 10 years. Part of my spiritual journey, and we taught, we opened with talking about Courtney. Courtney has been my reason. Courtney has been my reason to, f like, Yana, fix my life. Courtney's my reason to. Fix my life. <laughs> fix my life. <laughs> Please, what what can a bitch do to fix her life? To get it together, and um. I, I, I shared two things last week. I, I think um, in a newsletter I said, you know, um, the cards are up, up against us. You know, I, I think that, not I think, I know that the sis, there are systems in place that we were never supposed to own homes, that we were always supposed to live in the projects and receive public assistance. And there's no shame in that. But they, there's almost like they wanted us to stay small, stay not see how massive we are and that we could have generational wealth like who of us grew up believing that we could be millionaires when that shit was never modeled we never thought that shit was possible and so moving to dr and owning land in dr felt like so out of reach like i needed to have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and 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 i had no idea how the fuck i was gonna do it I am a priestess. I am a woman of faith, of tremendous faith. So when I was facing eviction, I needed to be a woman of faith. <laughs> when I was facing eviction five times and needed to roll up to that court, housing court five times, when they put that yellow marshal's note on your door talking about you got three days to vacate, you gotta get on your knees and pray. I remember sitting in the courthouse in downtown Lafayette in Manhattan, crying in hysterics with all my elekes on, my rosary beads in my hand, <laughs> my journal and prayer book, Cindy. <laughs> to God that the universe will, that y'all would not leave me out in these streets. <laughs> I remember, I remember coming home. I had just finished. I had, I, I just finished rapping. This is 2012. This was just yesterday. Wow. And I remember sitting in the living room in the house in Harlem, the, apart, the the Harlem house. And I was sitting on the couch, the blue couch. And I remember crying and crying and crying. And I was so mad at God. So fucking mad. I'm like, yo. I'm Obedient. I answered my call. I'm doing this writing thing. And this writing thing ain't paying me nothing. This writing thing ain't paying off right now. Was really good. I hadn't started teaching either. I hadn't started the work the workshops. 
Uh, right? So I hadn't begun understanding that I could monetize my gifts. I, I had to understand that I could, that, mm. that, that, that money is energy, right? Yeah. And that there's universal law, and that if I give, I will receive. I didn't understand that shit. All I knew was I was about to be evicted. A bitch was about to be out in the street. So I am having a very serious conversation with my God talking about what's really good because you are promising me the world, but you ain't delivering what's good, God. Mm. So I'm writing, dear God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? I am of mm. service. I am this, I am this, I'm doo -doo 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 -doo. and I'm writing, I'm going off on God. I'm going off. And the pen is moving, and God says, responds, it is not I who have abandoned you, it is you who have abandoned me. Mm. Wow. And, and so God was very clear about what was happening. If you want abundance, you need to be abundance. Fast forward. That's 2012. Remember, I'm about, so I'm getting my life. I'm, I'm getting my life. I'm getting my head right. Back to my affirmations. La 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 la. I get initiated in 2012. I begin my spiritual journey formally. I receive my 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 elekes. I receive my warriors. I receive my I receive poderes, powers, blessings. Achemo 2016. I um, get crowned. I become a Santera. Mm -hmm. 2019, I get another power. I'm like getting arms ready. Let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. In 2021, I had saved just a little bit of coin. I was saving, saving. I was very disciplined and very obedient. I didn't know what I was, at that point, I didn't know what I was saving for, but I was saving. Mm. And in 2020, I decided that I was going to take that bit of coin and I was going to open up a bank account in the Dominican Republic. I was going to begin to push the universe in my favor because I've been talking about moving to the Dominican Republic for decades. We're talking about 2008. Yeah. I wrapped on Afro Latinos. I knew I wanted to live in the DR. I, I knew I wanted to do work in the DR. So in 2020, I opened up the bank account. I remember it's December 2020. I do a very beautiful candle ritual, a community ritual where we're play, praying to St. Lazarus. We're praying for healing. It's, it was a gorgeous ceremony. I remember we did it, we did it on live. It was beautiful. And I remember wrapping that and, and driving to the airport. And in the car, God whispered in my ear, you are moving. It's time. Wow. To New York. And I remember telling Joseli on New Year's Day. Wow. Uh, this was December 30th. I knew December 30th I was leaving. On January 1st, I told Joseli, I am moving. I was registered. I, I had already asked if I would be moving. And Chango was like, yes, and you will be moving quickly. Mm. When, I, when I called the Dominican movers just to bring me the first three boxes, I didn't even have any money. I didn't even have any money. dollars <laughs> each, son. There was wow. five that money. Got the boxes, filled them, started packing. Yeah. Literally from the day I started packing, I moved six weeks later. Because six is his number. Six weeks from the day I said I was moving. The universe wow. badly enough, the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. Let's keep going though. Because I move. I'm living here. February 2021. Let's do it. In the summer of 2021, I go and I start looking for land. Mm. Now, I didn't know how much land was, but apparently I thought that for my little bit of coin, I was going to get hundreds and thousands of acres. <laughs> a million acres for my little bit of pennies. And then, you know, re reality hit and they're like, no, bro, that's not how shit works. 
land costs money. So I remember wow. going to see a, a property and in my mind, it was like this beautiful driveway. I don't know if any of you have ever gone to like the mansions in Newport. Like it's quite the, it's like the Gilded Age, research the Gilded Age, do a little bit of history homework family. But it's the, the rich and famous. They're summer homes. We're talking Vanderbilt. We're talking about um, Carnegie's. We're talking Rockefellers. They own, their beach houses were New, Newport, and them shits were mansions. Yes? Mm. Yes. So I imagine that this property in San Cristobal had this long driveway like I was going to Newport, and that it was going to have this view of the ocean. And so when we went to see, when we went for our appointment to see the land, they, we couldn't get in and they were like you know taking us through these like side driveways and, sh and we get to <laughs> like we go down this dirt road and we stop and there's like mad trees over here there's no view of no ocean there's no view of no ocean and there's certainly no driveway it was like some deserted ass scary shit out of like dexter like if you get killed they will never find you <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, this ain't it. The guy who showed us the land said, well, I have a little bit of land. I have, you know, Cinco Tareas, it's a maker um, that I'm selling. Are you interested in seeing it? And I remember going to see the land and I decided that I would not tell my friends who went with me if I liked it or not. I wasn't gonna show any emotion. I wasn't going to get attached to any land. I was gonna go feel it and allow Ogun, my father, the God of iron, who lives in the woods to guide me and say, this is it. So we go and we're walking this land and I remember leaving them so they could talk to the owner because also I didn't want him to hear my very American Dominican accent. <laughs> okay. Let me keep my mouth shut because you know we're trying to get those Dominican prices. <laughs> Hello. So I, I walk the entire length of the land. Mm. And I walked to the very end and I just stand there. And I knew this was our land. And I stay very quiet. And so I'm I'm very I'm very much I'm very much a mathematician when it comes to this shit. I was calculating. How can I do it? How can I negotiate? I only have this bit of coin. I didn't have the full amount. Would he accept a payment plan? Will he give me three months, ninety days to come up with the rest? I was thinking all the ways I could come up with the money, the fundraising, la, 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 la. So I was, my, my head was spinning. And he said to me, no, he did not accept my deal. He said, I'll give you, he said, I'll give you 60 days. He give me two months. That's August of 2021, last year. August mm -hmm. 2021. He said he would give me 60 days, two months. And I'm like, okay, bet. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll have a fundraiser, la, la, la. The fundraiser was beautiful. I certainly did not raise, you know, all of the money that I needed, but I worked my ass off. I was teaching like crazy. I was working like crazy. I was, I was doing my thing. I ended up getting the money in a month, four weeks. Wow. Because when you want something, enough, the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. And so... Mm. It, he, in September of 2021, we officially bought that land. So what is El Santuario? El Santuario is the sanctuary. And who is the sanctuary mm. for? Anyone who is looking for refuge. Every, anyone who is looking for a place where they can go and create to receive spiritual medicine. So I know I'll be practicing my religion on this land. And there will be people who will be coming to receive very specific poderes and things and so el santuario is listen yeah they don't folks don't even know like how far along we are like ogun's house is pretty much built the four walls mm -hmm. thing um and so el santuario is a place for folks to come and just it's for community it's for community it's for us to build it's it's very much el santuario is a spiritual center and we are a 5013C. We're a 5013C. Yes, so, a hundred percent go to El Santuario and also a tax deductible. So, know that. Oh, my goodness. So, please take, first of all, every time you, I hear you share 
about how this came to fruition, like my hairs stand up, right? Like, and I hope that folks are getting tools about like manifesting, but about trusting, about having faith, about walking the walk, right? Even when you're scared. If you could take a moment, please, Alicia, and put in the chat box where people could provide a love offering to El Santuario, a love offering to you for the work that you're doing and bringing forth, because this is really great work. I know I look forward to Velocity Visions having retreats in La República Dominicana. You already with, know. Um, all the other healers in the space. Yeah. And so... What I love about what you've shared tonight, and for anyone that wants to ask any questions, please go to the prompt at the bottom of your screen where there's a little question box. And please put any questions that you might have for Alicia Anabel Santos La Santera there. Because you gave us this picture. You just took us through a journey, right? A journey of redemption, a journey of healing, uh, a journey of rebirth, right? A journey of reimagining your life, right? I mean, the fact that you're literally, I mean, I love talking to you in the morning because then you hear like all the people like selling all the stuff in the back. <laughs> like when you were, because you're also on, um, what's it called? I always forget the name. You do meditations every day on, what Club is House. the name of that plant? Club Club House. So Mondays morning, and Fridays. Yes, yeah, on Mondays and Fridays. With, um, and she does that in partnership with Lauren, who's also yes. like this phenomenal healer who's in this space. And Lauren is a social worker, a thera psychotherapist. She's also a Reiki master. And I've been blessed to partake in her Reiki, and it's just phenomenal. And, and this morning when you were doing your meditation, I heard the people like selling the stuff in the background, the platanos and whatnot. All day, every day. So, you know, so at this time, I'd love for you to sort of share, like, what's one thing you want people to know? And it, there's never like one thing. But what are some jewels that you would want people to know about your journey, this journey of Sankofa? Like, you've literally gone back to the land of your ancestors, right? Like, let's talk about that, right? Like, today you get to celebrate being a mother, you know, while you connect with your journey of being mothered, while you connect with the journey of mothering, like, others in their journey and trajectory, right? When you talk about being a midwife and helping people bringing forth their stories, their legacy, like, what does that mean to you today? two things I want to say. The first is I'm, I'm thinking back to a Velocity Visions vision board workshop that I attended back in January 2021. That was very powerful, um, very telling. It taught me some things about myself, but I remember because it was, was it, no, it was, it was, in, it was in person. It was right before COVID. It was in it person. Was in 2020, yeah. It was in 2020, and I remember getting in the car, driving, and there was something that I wrote in that in that vision workshop, vision board workshop, that really stunned me. And it, it was the part about my finances. I had I have always been someone who believed in the law of attraction and the secret and writing these like fucking checks for ten thousand dollars and never that ten thousand dollars never hit my account, and for whatever reason, like. It, that shit was not working for me in the ways that they were selling how the law of attraction works. But this day, the, the prompts around finances, I remember writing down that I would be a millionaire. Mm. Remember writing that down. And I remember taking a photo of it and sending it to you because it stunned me. I was like, oh, word, that's how you feeling? You, go, you about to be a millionaire this year? Okay. And when I think about myself today, I'm a millionaire, Cindy. My land is worth millions. I am a millionaire in pesos, in Dominican right. pesos, 
but I'm a millionaire. Okay. And so you got to be very specific. You want that shit in euros? You want that shit in dollars? <laughs> that was my bag. So like this year, I'm telling the universe, it's dollars que queremos. Oh. <laughs> um, and so, you know, all jokes aside, um, what I, the one, the one gem or the one message that I hope is heard loud and clear and received um, is that I am worthy. I am so fucking worthy mm. of a good life. I am worthy of happiness. I am worthy of a partnership that feels equal. I am worthy of respect. I am worthy of owning land on my mother's land. I am worthy of having just a happy life, a joy-filled a joy life. I am worthy, and so are you. Mm. Worthy. And we have been told that we're not, that we're not deserving. We are so deserving. And when we know this, when we know this, we move in the world different. We more, yeah. That's why I could drop a workshop every week, because I know I can. That's right. I know I can. It doesn't matter if it's one person that shows up or 20. Mm. Because everything that I do, I do for me first. Everything that I give the world, I give myself first. Wow. Because I'm worthy. I am worthy. And so this worthiness allows me to be daring, allows me to be courageous, allows me to be bold, even when I feel scared. Yeah. I feel scared, like it's not going to hit, it's not going to be successful, people ain't going to show up. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I'm going to keep going because I know who I am. And so I pray that out of everything you receive today, um, you know that you can and you know you're guided, that you have mm -hmm. ancestors, you have a goon, you have spirit guides that are cheering for you, who, who are saying, just ask for us to support you and help you. And we got you. Because mm -hmm. if I, so can you. I'm a girl from, I'm a girl from Bushwick. Okay. And I land family. What? Oh my gosh. The gems you have dropped today have been immense, 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 immense. So at this time, if anyone has a question, you could either put it in the chat or put it in the question before we Before it go, yes, ask me anything. You can ask me anything. anything. Nothing off limits. You can ask me anything. Anything, anything, anything. Let's see, people. Yeah, I don't see any chats going on or any questions. Um, don't, you know, be free. I mean, this is a moment to connect. If you don't already follow La Santera, please do so at this time. You can go to uh, the little arrow down, and once you see her name, you just go ahead and follow her. Thank you so much. First of all, I love, oh, here comes a question. Oh, what a great question. Yes, what yes. is your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement. Courtney. 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 Courtney my greatest achievement. She's the greatest thing I've ever done. She's the greatest thing. Um, being her mother, um, just seeing her grow into the woman that she's become is, it's a, it's a blessing to behold. Like she is amazing to watch and it. It's not easy seeing your kids struggle, you know, and life be so hard on them because our kids are going through it. You know, especially, you know, millennials, you know, they, they're not having an easy time. They're not having an easy time out in the streets, like getting work and, and like, listen, but Courtney, just watching her navigate, watching her in her like self-care journey and her mental wellness journey and all of that, like, you know, her emotional intelligence, like she teaches me so much. And so she is my greatest achievement because I get to say that I I had a part in who this amazing human is and that 
Mm. Else that I could ever do that on top of that. Oh, I love that. I love and that. Baby e. that and, baby, and then Baby E, because Baby E's next. So that's going to be a blast. Baby E's next, right? Carla asked, so uh, Ala, or Access Rick says, no, that's an awesome answer. And Carla just asked, what's the one word you would share with young Alicia, age five? What a great question. What is one word? One word I would share with Alicia at age five? Yeah. It's four words. <laughs> Your voice is powerful. Mm. I would tell little Alicia at five that her voice is, look at her. Look at her. Let me show you her. She's that, that's a beautiful, that's such a beautiful question. I <laughs> I'm not five there, but I'm definitely three. And that's my brother. On the left? Oh, that's, oh, okay. That's, that's your my brother. brother. That's my brother, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love that picture. Mm -hmm. Like that little girl, her voice <laughs> is so powerful, and she won't know it for such a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. beautiful. Well, yeah. thank you all for your amazing questions. Thank you for hanging in here and um, picking up all these amazing jewels. Right? Always the Leo serving looks. Exactly. Exactly. I'm surrounded by Leos in my family. And <laughs> so I love me some Leos. Alicia Anabel Santos. Thank you so much for giving, gifting us of your time, your energy, your resources, your wisdom. I, I don't take it lightly. The community loves you. Uh, mm -hmm. I love you so much. I can't wait to go to DR and see you. I have to make my way there this summer somehow. <laughs> and um, have a fantastic rest of the evening. Please I'm make sure you check her out because she'll be on. Um, and I love you so much. Thank you for sharing everything you've shared. I love you so much, Cindy. Thank you for this beautiful, candid conversation. Everyone who follows me, follow Cindy and Cindy's work because you are such a beautiful being. I'm so grateful to know you. Um, and thank you for this talk. It was so, so beautiful. It was so good. My, my heart feels so full. All right. I love you. Well, I um, have a fantastic rest of the night. I know this is not the end of tonight for you. So you I'll already, be seeing you later on. I already know. Later on. Let's <laughs> I'm get out. Get warmed up. I'm gonna go there's get a birthday up. party. There's a birthday party. <laughs> I love you. I love you all. I Thank you all family. for showing up. And have a fantastic rest of the evening, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.